This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Joining us today is David Price, the CEO of Rockfire Resources. Thank you for joining us again, David. How have you been? How are things? Very well, thank you, Mark. You know, it's uh, all been very hectic at Rockfire, so uh, always keeping busy, which is good. Always keeping busy. Okay, good. Well, I know the focus is, of course, the Hanoi project in Greece. So let's just get a bit of a catch up on what's been happening over the course of the last six months with this project. Sure. No, thank you. It's uh, it's good to be able to finally. Uh, Tell people about uh, what we're doing at Molai. It's quite an exciting project. It's it's developed very rapidly. We came out with our updated Jork resource, which, uh, to be honest, even took us by surprise because uh, we had a, a figure in mind that we thought that the resource might be of a certain size, and indeed it ended up being significantly larger than we first thought. Now, the reason for that is because there were many multiple smaller loads in addition to the main load. When you take into account all of these multiple loads, uh, the numbers just add up significantly. The tonnage adds up, uh, the grade held up nicely, and and indeed the underground uh, minimum mining width that you need for a mechanised underground mine is about two metres width. So Molai, the average grade is 4.1 metres wide, and that's, that means that it could potentially be, econ- uh, not economic, but um, uh, amenable to, to underground mining, which will be great. So um, the economics of it still, of course, have to be put into a scoping study, into a feasibility study, and, of course, into economic studies for the project. So uh, that's all, that lies all ahead of us now. Okay, so you've got that 1.5 million tonnes, that Jork resource there now announced, and you say that you, you, probably, uh, you would expect or you'd want to be going down the underground mining route and you've got sort of 4.1 metres sort of of, of, of mineralisation, sort of laterally like that. So that lends itself to the underground mining. Yep, exactly right. And we actually promised the Greek government that we what would not do open-cut mining. Uh, the area is dominated by by olive groves, and uh, of course, uh, it's the um, it's the livelihood of all the local people. So we're not going to come along cool. and simply wipe out their livelihood. So um, we yeah. said, look, we would uh, we would look at underground extraction, knowing full well that uh, anything in and around ten percent zinc equivalent is uh, is likely to be economic. So that's why okay. we said that, and uh, we intend to fulfil that. So. The underground uh, version of mining will be the one that we we approach in our scoping studies, and uh, we're uh, we've uh, got a permit in place at the moment that's been submitted to the government to drill a further thirty drill holes. Now those drill okay. holes will be infill drilling, and what it's designed to do is to bring the in- the inferred resource up to an indicated category. Now you cannot use inferred resources in feasibility studies at all. So according to the JORC code, you have to get them into indicated before you start your feasibility study. So we're going to move those uh, inferred resources into indicated, and then we'll be able to feed them into the into the middle, uh, into the uh, feasibility studies. Okay, so that's the next step in the infill to take it from inferred to indicated there. And you, you're still looking at the same tonnage effectively. Will that drop a little bit as it goes into the indicated category? Uh, it's, it potentially could drop. Um, I don't think that it would be significant, but uh, that's yet to be seen. And uh, the most important okay. thing is that the grade doesn't drop too far uh, because you can, you can offset a drop in tonnage by maintaining the high grade. So you're moving less dirt. Uh, for the for the same amount of zinc, so mm. that's that's the objective of it. And uh, look, we ideally we'd be looking to um, to do the infill drilling as well as uh, expanding to the north. So we've got another five kilometres of okay. of zinc uh, in outcrop to the north. We also have uh, historical underground workings to the north. They're just pits, shafts that the um, the old miners have have dug. And, of course, we've also got 35 drill holes that were drilled by the Greek government along that five-kilometre trend that hit high-grade zinc. So we're not stabbing in the dark. 
with the five kilometres, which is great. Um, we've got good indications that the zinc continues along that five kilometres. And that means that, uh, you know, we're, we're chomping at the bit to get our teeth into those, uh, into those drill holes up to the north as well. Okay. Well, let's talking about then getting ready to get, get started. What are the plans? I know you did a placing recently. Presumably this is to help fund the next round of drilling. So give us a bit of a sense of when you want to get on the ground and do those infill holes. Yeah, look, we're keen to get in as, as quickly as we can. As I mentioned, we've got the permits in place uh, to drill those 30 holes. Uh, the time frame for that is still uh, up in the air, but I would imagine it's probably going to be a month or so until we can get on the ground. And that gives us good okay. time to prepare uh, to be able to get going with um, with all of the land access permits. Of course, you need to have uh, permission from the landowners. So that's all ahead of us, and um, we'll, we're cracking into that already. We've actually started our discussions with the landowners, and, um, and they've been just absolutely fantastic. The landowners have welcomed us, and uh, they've okay. been very supportive of our work there. And uh, it's just great to be able to work in an environment where, where the company's actually welcomed, which is nice. Yeah. How important are those local relationships, David? Uh, Mark, they're absolutely critical. Uh, I know that um, uh, elsewhere in the world there have been uh, headlines made recently where uh, a number of companies have actually come a cropper with, uh, with the locals and also the authorities and uh, we're very fortunate to be in a country like Greece um, for personnel safety, which is obviously critical for any operation. Uh, your, your investment is safe. The government knows exactly what it's doing with zinc mining because there have been underground zinc mines in operation in Greece. So the government are very familiar with this. And uh, okay. it's a well-worn path in Greece, which is great. And, of course, um, it's just great to be in a place that you can... Uh, uh, have a mythos and a, and a gyros every now and then. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. So just thinking on the work program then, so hopefully getting started within one to two months on the on that infill drilling program, how long will that take? And you say you can't start the scoping studies until you've got some of the resource into the indicated category. So when are you looking to start that first scoping study or PEA, whichever one you're going to go down? That's right. Well, what we'll do is a scoping study first. The scoping study is a, a less um, uh, uh, in-depth study, and it's really going to give you an idea, can this deposit be economic at any point? So what you do is you do broad brush uh, economic parameters, you do broad brush mining parameters, broad brush processing parameters, and you feed that into a scoping study and you do your best case scenarios where you actually, this is how we're going to mine it, process it. Uh, this is where the tailings dam is likely to be, et cetera, et cetera. So it's those sort of uh, parameters that you put in as a broad brush. And it'll put out some numbers, uh, NPVs and IRRs, that actually will say, yes, this has the potential to be economic. So, look, we're keen to get into that as quickly as we can. Because these scoping studies are internal, uh, we don't actually need to have indicated resources for the scoping study so we'll do that in the interim and uh, and we'll, we'll, you know the good thing is it'll give us and our investors uh, at the confidence the confidence that it actually can make money the faster we find that out the better indeed indeed so just thinking then on sort of point a so point a is where we are now you've got that 1.5 million tons there of jork resource of zinc in the inferred category point b is to move some of that or most of it as much as you can into the indicated category and start doing the the scoping study route so that's all been sort of costed for has it and you've got certain milestones to be hitting along that way absolutely yep you bet so um look we've we're very familiar with the costs of drilling in greece now and so uh, we're able to put some pretty good numbers together and budgets so so uh, that's that's the idea for the it's certainly for the next six months uh, to get into that drilling and get going and try and knock off as many of those okay. thirty holes as we can. There, it may be that we actually don't need to drill the entire thirty holes if we get confidence that the uh, that the infill drilling is is actually behaving as we expect it to behave. Then um, uh, you know it, it could be that we don't need to drill all of them. So. Uh, so far, okay. um, it's a good statistic, actually, Mark, because um, of all the holes that the Greek government drilled and all the holes that Rockfire has drilled, there's not been a single hole that has not hit zinc. So that's a pretty impressive okay. uh, record, to be honest with you. So not many deposits around yeah, to say that. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Well, thank you, David. Just finally, just thinking about the market generally for zinc, just give us a bit of a sense of what you're seeing from the market dynamics here, supply and demand side of zinc. 
Yeah, uh, Mark, it's amazing. I, I've been a, a fan of Zing for a while now. And uh, uh, look, gold is the sparkle boy. Uh, everybody wants gold. And uh, because of the, the highs that it's hitting in its prices, um, it, it's it's the it's the bling boy, but uh, copper, of course. Uh, there's been uh, a lot of focus on copper over the last maybe five six years. People have been very heavily focused on copper, and the and the price has reacted accordingly. And um, and zinc is is the forgotten cousin. So um, you know, we we uh, looked at this zinc deposit in in Molai. We realised that the the grade that the Greek government was achieving in its drilling was likely to be economic if you could get enough of it together. And so we elected to go for this zinc deposit in Greece. And uh, it's sort of on the outer. Zinc has been on the outer for a while until it started to be added to a number of the critical mineral lists. And uh, and that's that's been uh, a tremendous boost, obviously a big shot in the arm for us. Uh, you know, zinc has been added to uh, the UK list recently. It's on the US list. It's on the Korean list. Uh, I know that the Europeans have got a very keen eye on zinc as well. And uh, so, you know, zinc is, is amazing. It's an amazing commodity because um, after coal and uh, iron ore and aluminium, it's actually the fourth most um, uh, traded uh, mineral in the world, so uh, element, uh, commodity. So it's got a huge market, an enormous market, and uh, it's used in everything. It's just stunning what zinc is used in. It's used in shampoos and toothpaste and all sorts of things. Sunscreen. You know, we used to have the old pink zinc uh, sunscreen on our nose. And uh, so it's used in many, many, many everyday commod uh, to, uh, products. And, and, and that's why it's a great commodity because it's used so, so widespread and, and, of course, you know, now it's being used in military applications. It's used in, uh, in, in, in space exploration, all sorts of things um, for protection against uh, radiation and solar waves, et cetera. Okay. So, um, look, it's a great commodity to be in and it's got a big future. Uh, it's now being on the critical list, uh, mainly because a lot of companies just have ignored it for many, many years. And uh, we're in the right space, we're in the right commodity, the right jurisdiction at the right time. So it's great for Rockfire. We're excited by it. And, uh, you know, the zinc has got a long way to go. So uh, we're pretty heavily focused on that, which is good. Of course, we've got, uh, we've got silver and lead at, uh, at Molai as well in, in pretty abundant uh, amounts. So we're, um, we're fairly fortunate to have silver in there as well and, uh, uh, and the lead, of course. So... Uh, a couple of other commodities. We've got the germanium there as a as a potential byproduct as we uh, process the zinc. So um, the germanium is is on the UK, the EU, the US, uh, the Australian, and the in the Indian uh, critical mineral list. So uh, that's a good uh, byproduct to have, and uh, we're very fortunate that um, our deposit of zinc actually hosts germanium. Uh, many many zinc deposits around there around the world don't actually uh, are not associated with germanium. So fortunately, uh, we're one of the minority that does have germanium. Okay, good. And I just had a, a thought now, just because of course you're in Greece in the European Union here, and of course the raw the critical materials uh, list that you said there. But of course the EU Critical Raw Materials Act, I think as well, is very sort of it's coming getting a lot of steam recently. I know a lot of companies are, are sort of going and, and making their pitch to the European Union for yeah either sort of grant funding or indeed sort of just regulatory sort of hurdles dropping. Is that on your radar at the moment? Engaging with the European Union on uh, on the deposit that you have? Well, certainly we've we've considered that, and it's something that we. We will continue to consider um, the the European Union is is um, really uh, crying out for its own domestic source of of germanium uh, and 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 rightly so and I think it's a it's a great policy that they've adopted there and um, look we will we will address each opportunity as it comes along Mark and uh, uh, we you certainly um, uh, be keeping a very close eye on opportunities for grants and um, and uh, certainly be telling the market if we uh, if we happen to snag one. Indeed. Well, thank you very much for your time. David Price, of course, the CEO of Rockfire Resources. Thanks very much, Mark. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com.